Hello and welcome to another episode of a midweek podcast uh, with First Baptist Sweetwater. Our mission is to be the first responders of God's love this morning or this afternoon, I mean. Uh, I have joining me my co-host, T. Hamilton. Hello, T. Hey, Jerry. Hey, I like your t-shirt. Thanks. <laughs> Good. Hey, <laughs> we are coming to you uh, this week through Zoom. Mm -hmm. And it was a, it's sort of an episode where we're going to do a little reflecting on this last year. Yes. <laughs> For one thing. Obviously. We're, we're much better at Zoom. At least it seems to me that we've, we've used this a lot more. The setup and getting this thing started today was a lot easier. Right. But I was uh, thinking about this last year. I was getting ready for uh, Resurrection Sunday, doing some planning ahead. And the, I, I was curious about something about when exactly we started the first Sunday uh, after all this spring break experience right. uh, with uh, strictly online uh, worship. Mm -hmm. And if I reconstructed this right, we had an episode of our podcast on Zoom prior to going online for worship the following Sunday. Okay. So I think if I got it right, last sunday was the first was one full year no. uh, since we'd gone online it was the first sunday after that spring break that uh, after the second spring break in our area that uh, we went strictly online for i think about 10 weeks well i doubt that there's any fact checker fact checkers out there so we're okay well <laughs> well if if a person has that kind of time then maybe they should be helping us produce this podcast we agreed I mean, Okay. That's what I'm thinking about. Uh, anyways, it was real interesting. I only listened uh, to that first episode, mm -hmm. uh, a, a part of it. And it was real interesting because at that point, we had no idea what was going to break yeah. and, and how uh, what this world was going to look like. I know what I guess was intriguing me <clears throat> in, in looking at it was I... I, I remember us thinking that we'd be back for Easter. Right. Yeah. That if we shut down for two weeks, that it would uh, kind of stall the, the uh, virus and that we could return and it would, it wouldn't take off near like it did. Right. And then over the next couple of weeks, we found out how many uh, medical opinions we have of people who are professional medical people on Facebook. Oh wait, they really weren't. Never mind. My bad. They're oh, I thought that I thought that all of them prefaced it with I am not a physician. I am not a doctor. I'm not a scientist. They did they didn't do that? No, they didn't. Of course not. They they told me exactly what their medical opinion was, and they didn't realize the word opinion was there. Oh, oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, th that goes on to say, Teague, I suppose, that it's been a very trying year. Yeah, most definitely. <laughs> it's been, uh, it's so, been challenging, but you know, we came out on it uh, on the better side, I guess, um, uh, technology wise. We learned a lot of things. Right. And we're able to uh, to think about things like backgrounds and what we have behind us on, on different things. Um, well, I was watching the, you know, the <laughs> tournament's big right now. And uh, uh, Rick is Rick Patino, former Louisville guy. Yes. Yeah. He was doing something that looked kind of like a Zoom type event. And he was in a hotel room with an unmade bed behind him. I was like, oh, goodness. Yeah. I was like, I'm sitting there telling Stacy if he would do this, this, and this. So, you know. Well, I mean, I mean there were a lot, there was a lot of educators for us on how to do a Zoom meeting right. at, uh, early on in that. And some people just didn't have time to watch those videos. No, they didn't. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have learned a lot. It was, it's been interesting uh, going through this process over the last year. And as we, you know, just in, in in our state, the last few weeks have had uh, the removing of the mandate for wearing a mask, and we are seeing numbers drop. Uh, I got my first shot of the vaccine right. last Friday. Many in our church have already had their first or second shot, and I the feel numbers like and sneaking around trying to give me a shot. <laughs> That's interesting. Uh, yeah, I don't. I don't think I trust her. <laughs> well she she's not a physician no no but she plays one in real life uh, so <laughs> it's the best been, part is she'll never see this 
Well, <laughs> that's so true. Uh, well, it's, it's just been an interesting year in so many ways. And of course, you and I enjoy a relationship where we we theorize a lot. Right. And 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 try to think through certain philosophies that we have at a church at, at church and in ministry. And so trying to keep that those philosophies intact. Right. with a whole new uncertain set of circumstances mm. uh, was challenging at times. Uh, but, you know, I think I, I was just thinking, listen, when you were talking about this, that I haven't said it in a while, but continually we've been proud of the way that our church has responded yeah. uh, to bringing uh, worship back online or back in to live uh, and even navigating past the removal of the mandates right. uh, our folks have really really been good and I think I think it helps us uh, really I think it helps it puts all of us on a different or maybe a similar page in right. terms of thinking through ministry what it really means and and what what we might be able to do better yeah and even before we started coming out from under the mask mandate we were proud of our church and our people because we heard horror stories of churches that were splitting and fighting over a mask and you're right. going good job way to you know help the name of jesus move forward in a good way by fighting over a piece of cloth over your mouth and right uh, and so that that was one of those things we never really had to deal with um our people they were more willing to um to look out for their neighbor and so that was helpful and and exciting um and just, you know, we, we don't say it very often, but it was a blessing to, to have that and not have to worry about that along with the pandemic. Well, it, you know, it was, it is an ongoing picture of unity where we keep the mission at the forefront because not everyone agreed with you and I on this. Right, right. Uh, and, or were as personally convicted about it and adamant about it, but they went along and they didn't, they, they didn't, they weren't complainers. Uh, they realized, they, I mean, the I say news, a word. They realized you know the good news was bigger than themselves. Right. And yeah. so uh, really appreciate our, our lead, the leadership in our church. I'd say uh, that, you know, one of the groups that I was able to meet with and, and talk about why one of the largest groups uh, what were our group of deacons and, and they embraced it, even though at that time, some of them said that they hadn't thought of it in that light in terms of reaching others and being a, a demonstration of our love for others. So definitely been a, a challenging year. One of the things this last week that I've done, and, and I don't remember, I don't, it surely wasn't intentional, but um, I started keeping some years ago. I, I do journal. I've talked a lot about that. You and I both uh, have some kind of journaling practice as a part of my devotional life. But I started a second journal that is really a, a journal that helps me stay focused on what's important uh, in my life and the goals I have and uh, in terms of ministry and, and relationships and career. But um, I was reviewing some of that stuff. And, and one of the, the big, since March last year, one of the big uh, conversations in that journal was my physical health because I knew that I needed to do everything I could to be as strong physically as possible in, in case I were to encounter uh, the virus and need to come out of it or uh, maybe even resist it. And so I, I started a regimen, got back in shape and lost some, some weight a little bit. But it was interesting reading that uh, and reflecting on what that time was, was like, or it enabled me to reflect on what that time was like. Right. And then one of the things that, that struck me as I've talked to uh, ministers over the last few weeks we were talking about regathering and what that looks like. Right. And so like for an example, in, in staff meeting today or, or yesterday in our conversation, I shared with you because uh, we are having that unique experience in Sweetwater of basically having two spring breaks that affect okay. our church. So there's three different Sundays that that affects. And usually the middle one is the one that's hardest hit. Right. And it, I think it was, I think that's our lowest attendance each year. Right. But it was interesting last Sunday, we only had two fewer adults or two fewer people mm -hmm. than we did a year ago. Right. Which was our last, no, then 2019, my bad. Right. Uh, not including pandemic year. So 2019, 
this the last week Sunday that was affected by spring break, we only had two fewer people on this Sunday. Right. Now, I, I have shared that our attendance jumped the next week that it, and it probably won't jump as dramatically here because right. that was the number Sunday was one of our highest numbers since regathering. Right. But as we've talked about regathering, it's I think we're used to developing procedures now in response to something that's outside our control. Right. Yeah. And and we think through those processes and, and coming up is Easter weekend, which is a, another a unique opportunities being on the very tail end of this uh, pandemic experience. Mm -hmm. How do we treat that Sunday with a potential crowd that comes? Right. Um, we've talked about that. We've adjusted our Linton schedule this year. And, and, and another one of those examples where something very positive has come out of yeah. it, yeah. as far yeah. as I'm concerned. Yeah. And, uh, but it, it dawned on me that the missing piece that still that remains for us in in regathering and this and this is fresh you and i haven't talked about this yet but it's the other things that that you that you've not that are not in a, a regular enough of a system that they're a part of what we would refer to as regathering mm -hmm. like the th things that tend to unite you and bond you mm -hmm. bring bring you together and and more particularly i was thinking about yours and Lisa's ministry, where you'll have activities where students get together, right? Uh, our children will get together and do something. We don't see it as much in, in congregational life, maybe, uh, or as uh, in, in, well, it, we, we had started a senior adult lunch, mm -hmm. uh, or an over 50, my bad. It's been, it's been long enough. I messed That's that up. 50, right? we had, yeah, we started. And, and so we've not talked about bringing that back right. yet. And, and so there's still some things in this process of regathering that are going to bring a lot and generate a lot of excitement, I think. Right. Well, and even little things like passing the offering plate. We don't, right. we don't do that anymore, but that's a big part of um, spiritual formation. And we talk about that, even if you're not giving in that moment, putting in the plate, but actually touching it, that that's, that's, there's that sensation of touching the plate that, that makes you think about your spiritual formation as it relates to giving. Well, oh, and and then you've got even in the precautionary measures that we've taken, like in our candlelight service mm -hmm. uh, at Christmas time, where we serve communion, but it was served individually with gloved, wrapped hands. And uh, our you know our great health code department protocol, mm -hmm. and there's something that's not as personal about these experiences we have. And so I think it's, it's. The, I, I mean, I don't know. I'm anxious to talk about this to some others because it's really just kind of dawned on me this morning that in this process of regathering, there's something that's beyond that that strikes closer to the heart of who we are individually and as a church. And we, we call it community. Right. That, that still is, that's re, that remains to be seen. Mm -hmm. And I, I think it's something that we look forward to uh, and, you know, because even in our own calendar planning here at the church, we've not, we, we did put P3 on the calendar last week or two weeks ago, right? Yeah, right. And so we're acknowledging that that's an event, a, a big event that defines us as a church that we are, we've set on the calendar and we're going to do that this summer. But even that's not that, that kind of regathering and sense of community. I mean, in a sense it is right. uh, with our identity. But, uh, you know, the pool party uh, in July that we have for our churchwide pool party, different things like that. I mean, it's uh, I think we're we're really going to find ourselves in a in a deeper sense of community and a really good place. At least if if not in reality, at least we can start praying to that end. Yeah, I, I don't think we'd ever thought of there being a time when we'd be tired of technology, but I kind of right. feel like people are going to be excited to get back together and and talk on a real level, even, yeah. even just sitting, you know, one of the big things for us is a fire pit. You know, we have the, the cooker trailer, we have the men's cooking team. They're out there cooking. People come out, sit, talk. I mean, those are things that we missed out on. And now right. getting those back is going to be great. I mean, we had the little elements of it. We had uh, a sermon on the mound. We had a journey class met a couple times outside. So you had that in, in bits, but you didn't have what we're used to. Right. 
Well, and it's, we do have some things, the things that are coming back online for us in terms of activities and ministry are for us currently our mission, our mission and our volunteer oriented. We've had a group of folks who are helping uh, build a fence uh, uh, for someone in, in our church build and, and, uh, and there's been some demolition so far and then that fence will be built. We'll have our men's team is leading a project to, uh, to paint our fellowship hall. So we're, even though those events, I think, can lead us into this greater sense right. of experiencing community and, and working together. Yeah. So uh, definitely some some unforeseen, exciting times ahead of us in regard to these kind of things. Yeah, it's, it'll be like um, real Easter or getting close to it. Right. Yeah. And we're going to actually have to be able to celebrate. So, it'll right. Be I, you know, I still have no idea what that gathering is going to look like, but it's there. But even though we we're going to gather. Yeah, exactly. The, the emotional sense of that is that we're not going to have to just come up here by ourselves with with a small team, lead the worship service and go home Yeah, without the energy and excitement that that day brings. And so uh, anyways, thanks for uh, for joining me on this uh, podcast today, this Zoom call podcast. It's been fun to uh, see you and <laughs> address you in a different room of the church office uh so and this is uh we duplicated not only the t-shirts from last year but uh the setting mm -hmm. so <laughs> thank you t once again anytime uh so yeah so anyways but uh we look forward to being a part of your worship on sunday this sunday is palm sunday children will be leading us in worship as well as our worship choir and uh, it's going to we're going to let the, the palms get the, the worship service uh, started. And then it's going to be a really good day of worship and concentration on uh, following those steps of Jesus to the cross. So look forward to seeing you on Sunday, Teak, at 1030. And whoever else will show up online or in person. We look forward to being a part of your week. See you then.